Oh yeah, well, life goes on Long after the thrill of living is gone John Mellencamp Took me a long time to figure out what he meant by that But today, I know what it all means And we discuss it Okay <laughs> It's Black Hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies Look at these views from cooking these foods Yeah Well, 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 if it isn't you again. What up, world? Back with a, another one today. Cooking. Very nice, very good, fun times. I'm excited. These look delicious. Uh, they're inspired, though, by KFC, the Twister, uh, with the lemon pepper mayo and all that goodness. The only thing is that uh, the concept is great, KFC, but KFC, your execution is terrible. Twisters are delicious, but like why you got to put soggy lettuce in why you got to put the dark green stuff why is it got to be from last year why do you put a half a tomato don't understand the chicken and tortilla are okay they're great like they're doing their thing sometimes a little too cold uh but uh you need to train the employee i know it's hard to give a fuck at fast food restaurants too when you work there trust me been there uh but you know a half a tomato and some soggy lettuce just it's not gonna cut it so when you want something done right you do it yourself. And that's what I just did. But I did it in a bun form on a sandwich, burger, not breaded, but these are good too. Okay. Let's pour up. We got a nice, a nice ice. 
a diet Dr. PZ going in. A moment of silence for the pour up. Yes, thank you. I said silence. I can hear floors creaking. Such a 90s uh, commercial? For sure. When you see the fizz fountain just popping off, look at it popping off. It's like uh, outside of the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, but pop. Soda. That's soda cool. That's soda cool. And I think we must make this an initiation in every video. After the pour up, we, we have a fine wine moment. That's how people drink wine, right? When it's like like good out of the vineyard, like Italy and shit. Oh, soda goo. It is delicious though. Dr. Pepper has their recipe, a down, a pat. It's crazy, out of all the diet pops, that one, this diet, it tastes the closest to the regular. Anyways, let's eat these sandwiches and talk about John Cougar Mellencamp's lyrics and what they mean to me now, now that I'm an old man. So, okay. I'm so excited. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so, these are going to be so good. Okay. Where's the cheese one? Right here. Okay, cool. As we must, one to the side. Move them to the side. Move them to the side. Don't think about it too hard, but it's a sexual reference. I must make my Guy Fieri room. We always need our Guy Fieri room. And if you don't know what that means, that means we need an area for our hands and things. So we clear the board to do major destruction. Here we are. Up close and Percy for you. And the rest is going in my trap. And I know you guys are saying, shut up and eat. And I will, okay. And I did toast the bun. I know it didn't look like it, but I did it in, in the air fryer. So it's like the exterior is more toasted than the interior, which is fine. You know what? No. I brought extra sauce just for this reason. Just for the saucy drizzle of the first, first bite. Yes. A whole lot of yes. brought like a gym towel for a napkin because I'm sick like that wow Must avoid danger, but you guys, oh yes, I executed on this so well. It's all about that lemon pepper mayo, man. Lemon pepper mayo, man. It's so good though. Oh, just the pepper and the lemony cut with the bacon and the freshness of that, of the uh, vegetables. Wow. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Black hoodie unhinged. Okay. So let's have a light discussion. Oh my god. I don't I wish I had something to mop that up with. A light discussion about John Cougar Mallencamp and his lyric. Uh, life goes on long after the thrill of living is gone. Now, because I'm from Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada, I woke up to that song my entire life um, up until when I moved to Toronto because Tor uh, Thunder Bay has uh, one radio station and it plays hard rock, classic rock, the only rock. Um, so John Cougar Mellencamp was on, you know, once an hour on the hour, every hour for the last... 30 years 
So, um, so it's, it's ingrained in my head to say the least. Now I didn't know growing up what he meant because I had to grow up to learn what he meant. And basically what he means is you get to a point in life where you've lived the basic package. You've done basically all the shit. The sketchy shit, the whatever shit, you know. You, you, you smoke some drugs, you smoke some weed, you, you did some, you drank alcohol, you barfed, you partied, you, you lost your virginity, you did anal, like, you know, things like this. Like, just all those crazy, like, risky, new discovery, crazy behavior. You know, you had your first job, you, you drove your first car, you did all of the shit. You, you became an adult, basically. Right? Oh. And at a certain point, life just becomes this repetitive thing where nothing feels very new. Nothing feels risky, nothing feels scary. It's just boring and safe. So that's what it means. Life goes on for a long enough time. Long after those thrills of living are gone. You know? I've definitely found myself in these situations, but there are ways to remedy it. I thought, for me, it's like cooking new recipes. Eating on camera and putting myself on the internet. Like, weird shit that keeps the thrill of living, you know what I mean? It doesn't get too... boring it in the box. That's why I like doing this shit. It keeps me thinking, keeps me going, keeps me moving. And there's always like the possibility of some new crazy shit happening from it. Mm. Wow, so good, the cheese really hitting on that one so I just last night in my live stream all these people in places that I want to travel to were like yo come out like you could hit my coach or I have a spare bedroom like travel to like Africa South Africa Australia shit like that that's a definite way to remedy that whole like feeling like nothing's new is travel I assume travel I haven't really traveled too too much but I'm, I'm thinking going overseas to crazy places. I might have to sacrifice my napkin for this pool of water. Reactivates that like sense of wonderment and like like excited but scary like fear kind of thing, you know? Like just reactivating that because basically I'll talk that in. Like you guys remember like I always get nostalgic and think about like being a kid again and not even a child I'm talking like 12, 13 I ache for that feeling of like getting caught for smoking weed or like getting too high for the first time or like going to some crazy party that like your parents can't know about and like you get drunk you like hide shit and it's like it's risky like that feeling I miss that feeling so much in life and I feel like that's why people like drink and do drugs and things like that is because it lets you kind of at least get a little bit close to that. Like it, it, it lets you just get back to that, uh, that space of like, you know, less care. I 
feeling more free, just like, you know, but it'll never get you back to like the, that part like in life when basically doing things for the first time, that first time experience and the risk that's like involved with it and with some things. You'll never replace that feeling, but there's ways to get close and mainly is trying new things. So like, even if you see me cooking something and you just have like the same shitty food routine, just like try it. Try cooking something that I cooked that you've never had. You know, try a different sauce combination. Try... Let's try shit. Do different shit. That's how you keep the spice of life alive. I think that's why I like making music and shit too. Because making a song is like a new discovery. It's something that didn't exist coming into existence and it makes me feel like like goosebumps, like tingles, like excited, you know? That's why it's so good to have like passions and hobbies, especially in areas where you create. I honestly wholeheartedly believe that on this planet, in this life, that's what we came here to do. Create. Why do you think we have an imagination? Nothing in this world would exist if not for the imagination, if not for somebody else's imagination, like you can vision it out here in the ether and you pull it and bring it to existence and then the world gets created so I honestly believe that's what we came here to do we came to create and play and have fun and enjoy shit like not just to be a fucking wage slave building somebody else's dream over and over again every day feeling like you're trapped stuck what's the point this is boring as fuck like I get I've been there like I'm still kind of there like you know I'm not fully free of it yet but and I know that we're animals and shit and like we're, we're technically a lot of people will say your only purpose is to reproduce, like, you know, to keep the species alive and keep it going, but I don't believe that either. Because I have free choice when it comes to reproduction, and I don't want to reproduce. I don't care to have a child, like, it has nothing to, well, I guess that does re touch into this subject, though. That, like, that first time experience of Excitement and fear, having a kid. That would definitely be that, for sure. I suppose that'd be a cool life experience, but it's just, I don't know. It's like, it's not really in the cards for me, I don't think. It, it might be somewhere, somewhere down the line, but I have that luxury. I'm a dude. I can just blast one off when I'm in my 40s, like, you know what I mean? And honestly, I wouldn't even mind being an older dad because if I'm going to bring a kid into this world, I want to provide it the life it deserves of not like a struggle. I want to have my shit together before I do that. I don't want to like subject this new life into a world where it's like, 
I can't give it like a nice, comfortable, good, dope life. Fuck that noise. If I'm having a kid, that kid's gonna be like well provided for and not born into struggle city. Obviously I'll raise it with good morals and teach it it. I don't know if it's a girl or boy yet, you know what I mean? It's an ether. But uh, you know, teach it, you know, how to work hard and things like that, but and just, you know, respect and shit like that, but um I definitely would we just wouldn't want to subject a child to like a you know, a, a poverty, like, just rough life. That's not chills. Um, I'm done with that. I'm at the point. I'm going to pour up a last one for this conversation because it was sick. <laughs> I'm really channeling the flow today. I'm feeling the universe coming through. God energy. What up? And, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Life, man. It goes on long after the thrill of it is living is gone, but sometimes you do have a choice in that. You'll never get those first-time experiences back, like when you were young, like smoking weed for the first time. I have a lot of memories around this whole weed thing when I was young. I just, I loved the risk of smoking weed. It was so fun, and I loved being high. So there's that. Don't smoke anymore, but yeah, you know. So anyways, you do kind of have ways that you can go about still keeping it, you know, fun and interesting. Don't lay down and die early. It's going to be a long, slow death. If you just don't do the shit, go do the shit. Great. Go play some sports or something. Try a new sport. I don't know. Jump off a cliff into some water from not too high. Like, you know, things like this. Keep it interesting. Keep it moving. Keep it motivated. Till the next one. Eat good. Live well. Stay true.